So this is, I think, maybe the fourth year I've uh, been invited to join uh, Debbie and uh, this community of parents. Um, I, um, I'm delighted to be here. Uh, I happen to be a college parent myself. I've got five children. Uh, one's a graduate from Arizona State. One just graduated from Berkeley. One's at Scottsdale Community College. And I've got two 16-year-olds in my house. So um, I, uh, I'm speaking both as a parent, but also as a founder of GradGuard. Uh, GradGuard is a company you've probably never heard of unless you've been uh, on one of these web, uh, webinar events before. Um, and I'm really not here to talk about my company. My company is a remedy, but really I want to be able to share with you what we've learned over the years. I started this company more as a passion project 15 years ago. Uh, I really believe that uh, unlike when I went to college at Arizona State in 1985 and paid $450 um a semester uh by the way parking is more than that today uh for most asu students um but you know really today um uh, paying for college the risk of paying for college is burdened mostly by families mostly by parents and nobody really um had unpacked what are the risks of paying for college and about 15 years ago i started really digging into that and then looking for remedies because the reality is there's a lot of things that get in the way of graduating. Uh, there's a lot of risks that are unforeseen and there's nobody really talking about that. Um, and so uh, it's really my purpose tonight is to kind of share with you what we know, uh, what we know to be real in terms of the nearly 18 million students that go to college um, and, and what you can do to take precautions to prepare your family, prepare your student, some of which are insurance policies that my company's created, but some of them are also um, just good, good practices, uh, to become financially literate, uh, in your own family's lives. Um, now I'm just looking at the chat to make certain I've got it. Um, Amanda, thank you for your note. Um, saying five kids is amazing. My wife is amazing. Um, that's probably the, the thing I'd give her credit. She's, uh, uh, we met at Arizona state many years ago and then both went to grad school and, uh, somehow at 40 found ourselves pregnant with twins. Um, so I always say God laughs at your plans and that's certainly the case in, in, in our world. So, uh, let me just give you some context, uh, that is useful for a uh, grad guard. Grad guard, uh, works with universities to embed ourselves in the enrollment processes of universities. And I'm just going to give you two examples, and then we're going to talk about the greater risks. Um, so, um, as I mentioned, the risk of paying for college is basically borne by students, parents and taxpayers, taxpayers that fund student loans. Um, one of the, the key factors uh, when we hear about the media talking about uh, the student loan crisis, it is a real problem uh, for many, many students who've borrowed too much, but it's mostly a problem for students who did not graduate. If you borrow and do not complete your degree, do not get a credential, your likelihood of default is very, very high. In fact, 80% of student loans are uh, that default are from students who did not complete their degree. And the alarming part of that is, as many of you may be first time college parents, is that one in four students, this is according to National Student Clearinghouse, in 2021 that enrolled in school did not re-enroll anywhere the second year. One in four. So imagine 25% of, um, of Chevy's not working a year after you paid uh, $30,000 or $40,000 or $50,000 for something. In uh, that statistic, uh, when you get dig into it, there's lots of reasons why students may not persist. Uh, many of them happen to be emotional health, mental health, we like to call it, but I actually refer to it as emotional health. Um, and one of the most important factors is this data was not widely reported in the industry. Um, the National Clearinghouse uh, is a nonprofit in Washington, D.C. that collects all the data from all the schools related to persistence rates. And they're the, the go-to data source for helping the government and institutions benchmark themselves around persistence, graduation rates, uh, six-year graduation rates. And then they also uh, work with, with uh, states to evaluate persistence rates. So how, what percentage of students that went to a particular high school may have actually earned a credential later in life? So there's, this is the most reliable source of data. 
Um, and one of the key data points that just came out again in 2021 is 113,000 students withdrew for school due to uh, medical reasons. And those 113,000 people, students, um, those withdrawals were legitimate withdrawals. And if they all paid $15,000 for that term, it represents almost $2 billion of losses. And why I say losses is universities very much are in a position today, very different than when I went to school in the 80s, that they can't afford to provide refunds the way they did. When it was affordable, they might've uh, given me a credit or, or given me the $450 back. But today, virtually every school depends on the tuition income they generate, and they don't have a plan to return it unless you withdraw in the first four or five weeks of school. In fact, the refund policies of institutions, uh, universally 96% of on our last survey uh, of schools do not provide refunds after the fifth week of school. Most schools provide a prorated refund for those first four or five weeks. And the first thing I would say to all of us on the phone is just like any other consumer purchase, it's vital that you understand what the terms and conditions of the payments are to, to your schools. Uh, in many cases, um, the schools that work with GradGuard, we actually help schools disclose their refund policy. Just like American Airlines tells you they're not going to provide a refund if you don't make your trip and they provide you an opportunity to provide to buy uh, travel insurance, we work with schools all over the country to do the same thing. Um, and I'll speak a little bit about what tuition insurance is in a second, but I wanted to make certain that um, I, I'm, I like the highlight, uh, Debbie, thanks. Um, but I want to make certain you understand the risk first, and we'll talk about these other risks uh, here shortly. Debbie, you want to? Uh, welcome everybody as well. Oh, thank you. Sorry about that, guys. Um, uh, we're having just started storms literally as we got on. So, John, let me make sure you're still co, co host in case I get kicked out again. Okay. okay you are. Okay. So, um, I don't know what you got to say, but I got to say basically, college is riskier than it looks. It's certainly more expensive than most of us when uh, most of us, if we did attend college, uh, paid uh, 25 or 30 years ago. Um, so, uh, and I've seen a bunch of nice comments here in the, uh, chat section. So, okay, great. Um, I mean, I would love for you to explain to people, um, I mean, how tuition insurance works and maybe some examples of where people, you know, have unexpectedly had to use it, but, you know, they were glad that they had it. Um, and kind of, if they're interested, you know, there are some things they need to know about when to when to sign up uh, to, uh, you know, and where to, where to do it. So uh, first and foremost, thanks, Debbie. The, the, the first thing for all parents, anybody treat paying for college like any other consumer purchase. Do not expect schools to provide a refund, even if they're nonprofits. Um, and you should expect to be informed that all schools who participate in the federal financial aid system have a requirement to provide notice of their refund policy to every student each year. And so we help schools do that when you're paying your bill electronically at almost 600 universities today. Um, the schools that work with GradGuard can also then provide you a access to protect up to 100% of your cost of college, which includes tuition, it's room and board and academic fees. Uh, and so uh, the key piece of that combination is it's the total cost of attendance that we're protecting. And so it, it even though we call it tuition insurance, it's much more than that. Uh, the, the reasons um, that we, the, uh, the causes in which tuition insurance pays is similar to travel insurance, but it's better. Uh, we think about all the situations that a student might encounter, getting a concussion, about 6% of students get a concussion. Uh, some portion of those will be so serious, they may not complete the semester. Universally, according to American College Health Association's data, 2% of college kids for the last 30 years have gotten mono. Some portion of those students are gonna get such a debilitating case that they may not complete the semester. And so when you start looking at each of these issues, mental health, emotional health, physical illnesses, accidents, injuries, addiction, the death of a parent, the loss of employment by a parent, these are all covered reasons. And I'm really delighted to say that we basically have, have worked over the last 15 years to build a product that delivers not only on the promise, but delivers on the real needs of parents and students have. This is a very unique thing. It's not 
like traveling uh, an airline ticket that's five hundred dollars. It may, I mean, when you think about paying for a lot of our, the schools we work with, they're very expensive. And virtually every school today, whether it be Auburn or Alabama or Texas or Arizona State or Baylor or SMU or uh, or Harvard or NYU, they're all relatively expensive. Um, and so if you can't afford the cost of an extra semester, you really need grad guard and you should ask your school uh, if they provide it. Um, so John, do you mind? I mentioned this before I got kicked off um, that I just randomly came across a um, post in our uh, Facebook group. This was from yesterday. And I just think it's worth reading because this is completely unsolicited. Is it nothing to do with, you know, even grad grad per se, but it's about, you know, getting tuition insurance. So this is what a parent wrote. They said, Tuition insurance is a smart financial choice. We just received a check for 16,000 plus as reimbursement for my son's spring semester after he needed a medical withdrawal for unexpected mental health reasons. We paid about 150 ish dollars for the plan, which reimburses 80% of the total semester fees paid. There was no warning that my son would face first time mental health challenges, no way to predict he wouldn't finish the year. Although his well being is obviously our top priority, we are so grateful for this reimbursement. Yeah, and, well, it's, it works. It really works. And, and I'm not an insurance guy, although I am licensed. Uh, I didn't start my career in insurance. I saw a big problem to solve, which are basically nobody I know can really uh, manage losing a semester's uh, of of your tuition and housing and academic fees. And so, uh, I will tell you uh, the most gratifying thing uh, that we have running our business is um, the ability uh, for us to really surprise people like that. Sometimes people forgot they bought it, um, and uh, the reality is. Uh, it really performs. One of the things I'm most proud of is we work with Allianz. Allianz is the largest insurance company in the world, the largest uh, provider of travel insurance as well. They're a great carrier. Uh, you know, we paid 98% of the claims we had, 98%. I don't think there's an insurance company in the country that can make that claim. Uh, you know, it works as uh, as promised. And, uh, and then the really big piece is it's affordable. Uh, it's 1.2%. The schools that we work with are uh, typically cost around 1.2%. So $120 for $10,000 of coverage. Now you have to buy it each term, um, but uh, that's a really affordable uh, price. Uh, it's less than what it was 15 years ago. Uh, and that's because of the network effects of working with a lot of schools and ensuring uh, students nationwide. Uh, we don't take the risk of any one school. We take the national risk. We don't know which student is going to have a mental health issue or concussions or, or mono, but we know nationally that this is the right way to price it. Um, now, if your school doesn't work with GradGuard, you can go to gradguard.com and buy it directly. Uh, it's a little bit different product. They don't We don't cover uh, involuntary job losses, just one example. Um, and it's twice as expensive. It's 2.4%. And that's because of the adverse selection that we get from people who buy directly online. And so I would encourage you, if your school doesn't work with GradGuard, just speak to the bursar, speak to the orientation advisors and say, you know, why don't you work with GradGuard? Because it costs nothing for the universities to implement. Uh, and today, almost six, we'll announce later this week, 600 schools are now working with us. And initially when we started this, only private institutions offered tuition insurance. Today, schools nationwide from UC Berkeley to U University of Texas, Texas Tech, Auburn, Indiana, Purdue, schools nationwide are offering this. And so one of the things I feel great about from an equity side is this is no longer something that just rich students and privileged students can uh, can afford themselves to, but it's something that students nationwide can. And I went to Arizona State. Arizona State's now a partner of ours, which I'm delighted about. The first time I heard of tuition insurance was at Harvard, uh, where I'd gone to grad school. And so I said, it's odd that Harvard offers it, but Arizona State didn't. And now... Now they all do. So, so John, uh, can you talk about, because that's a kind of new thing, right, about the unemployment? Yes. So the loss of uh, involuntary job loss is basically when you get laid off and your student still needs to withdraw. Maybe there's a number of reasons why the student would need to not complete the semester and return home. Um, maybe the family really needs that money back. <laughs> Um, and so we, we do cover an involuntary job loss. So it's not if you quit your job, but if you were laid off, uh, your company closes or something like that. It's a, it's a nice feature. Uh, we do know that uh, semester can be a hardship for a family that's going through that. And so we, we, we continue to look for things um, for reasons that are why students are leaving school. Job loss of a parent was something that was indicated 
to us from the school partners we've had. So, um, but you know, it's tuition insurance is something most people never heard of. You've never heard of grad guard, most likely you've never heard of tuition insurance. Okay. And so I'm always thankful that Debbie f focuses on this conversation. Uh, the most important thing isn't about knowing about grad guard. The most important thing is to evaluate your family's risk and evaluate the refund policy of the school. Right. Make certain you understand there are uh, about 4% of schools that do provide refunds. Most of them happen to be Jesuit schools or Catholic schools, religious schools mostly. BYU, for instance, uh, provides a refund or a credit. So there are schools that uh, you don't probably need it for the cost of tuition. The reason to buy it would be for housing or academic fees. So John, there's a question about um, uh, should somebody request coverage for the amount that they are responsible for, like kind yeah. of net of financial aid or for the full amount? Net of financial aid, uh, it's what your actual loss is. So my students were on scholarships at Arizona State and, and at Berkeley, and so the net amount was much less. And so, yeah, you don't need the full amount in most cases. It's what it's really what your out-of-pocket costs are. So, And yes, University of Oklahoma is a partner. Uh, you know, we're the SEC, the, uh, the Big 12, they're all doing great. Uh, West Virginia, we've got great schools. Um, and, you know, it's my goal to get every student the opportunity to protect themselves, every family to protect themselves. And if they do, then the spread of risk ends up uh, working so well that our prices have actually been really steady and our coverage keeps getting better. And that's our goal. We're really a mission driven organization. We want to help people. We want to pay claims. We want to help people complete their degree. So, so yeah, we, didn't, point, we didn't yeah. plan this, but today happens to be Amazon Prime Day. And I'm only bringing that up because there's a big, like people like, there's a, bit, a lot of conversations about mattress toppers and mattress toppers can cost you like over $200 versus yes. like, you know, do you want to spend that on the mattress topper? Do you want to spend it on the insurance to make sure, you know, you don't have, you know, not, not in a situation of losing a semester's worth of tuition? That's right. I, uh, I would recommend so uh, I tell this to my friends and assuming all you guys would be my friends, I, I recommend that every freshman year, you definitely do it. We see a higher incidence of withdrawals uh, due to uh, all types of health issues, living away and living on your own first time. Um, and so uh, it's, it's certainly a good decision for freshman families. Uh, I, by the time you're a junior or senior parent, you probably have a pretty good assessment of your, uh, the resilience of your student and what vulnerabilities they may have. And you may not have the same need. Um, on the other hand, you may have some chronic health conditions that would really warrant it. And so I'm not trying to talk you out of buying it for juniors and seniors, but I think it's everybody's uh, individual decision. So, um, yeah, I think the first two years, uh, you know, Stuart just posted that. I think first two years you can do it, uh, right. Uh, Alisa, you just asked, uh, yeah, $480 uh, for up to $50,000. Um, you know, so we do have one competitor, a company called AW Doors. Doors works with about 30 schools, uh, including like a TCU and a USC. Their costs are different than ours. Uh, frequently, they're opt-out programs. Um, and it's traditionally a commercial insurance program. So the school's paid and then the net amount uh, that might be otherwise owed to the family is then paid. It's a fine product, they're a fine company, uh, and they are the, the oldest uh, provider of it. We just have a different approach. We, we created a national pool. We don't underwrite schools on an individual basis. We, we underwrote the 18 million students in the country. So. so John, before we move to like renter's insurance and other insurance, I just wanna make sure that um, it's clear to people when they need to get this, because once classes start, um, you yeah. can't necessarily Thank you enroll. For, yeah, you're uh, you're such good uh, nudge, <laughs> good nudge. Yeah, you have to buy it before school starts. Right. Uh, so uh, I would, and Natalie's on, uh, just posted uh, something about where you can run it. Uh, you just like the travel insurance. You can't buy it after the trip started. You can't buy tuition insurance after the school starts, uh, school semester starts. Uh, my recommendation is when you're paying your bill, you should see an offer. Uh, over 2 million students and families will see offers to uh, purchased Gragard's tuition insurance this year. Uh, if you are not seeing one, you're working at a school that doesn't work with Gragard right now. And so just go ahead and ask the school. It's like, why, why aren't you providing this? Or what's your refund policy? And if they don't provide 100% refunds, then they sh really should work with us. Um, now, the reason schools don't work with us, just to give you an idea, is they haven't heard of tuition insurance either. Uh, and so they didn't know this was a thing. And it's kind of just creeped up on the industry that realized we're dealing with one of the, 
the biggest emotional health crisis of college young of young people in our lifetimes. Uh, this COVID era is really created a lot of vulnerabilities that we all see in our households. Uh, I've seen it with my own children. And what I would just say is uh, there's nothing, um, uh, you know, uh, that I think um, was ill-intentioned by schools. It's just inadvertent that the high cost of college and the uh, combined with the vulnerabilities of this generation, almost 20% of college students go to school on pres uh, prescription medicines. That's That number is up dramatically from when we as parents were in school, it was less than 5%. And so a lot of those are for emotional health um, and other, uh, other chronic illnesses. And so it's just really important to realize the high cost of college and the unique needs and health needs of this generation create an undue risk that you need to protect, so. Okay, so there are other types of insurance that we were going to discuss tonight. Um, somebody's asking about uh, renter's insurance, which Gregard also offers. So yeah, let me just tell you a little bit about Greg, uh, Gregard's renter's insurance. So um, we created this program for the University of California. Uh, I uh, Nobody wanted to insure knucklehead college students. Uh, there's just a lot of losses. But there are a couple of things that have really changed. So 3 million students that live in residence halls, 3 million. Um, there are nearly 2,000 fires every year in residence halls. And unlike when I was in school and I only had vinyl records, and there were no sprinklers in uh, the best hall that I lived in at ASU, um, today, uh, virtually, especially after the Seton Hall fire, virtually all residence halls uh, have uh, water suppression. And so those fires lead to severe water damage. The average claim we pay is around $60,000 and it's primarily around water damage. Um, and so uh, the need for renter's insurance is really different than, because water sprinklers and electronics, those are the two principal things. The, the third thing is universities uh, have become, uh, as one DPS officer said, chief of police at a university said, malls for thieves, mm -hmm. students, meth users, drug users, organized crimes. Uh, you know, there was one university that reported 70 backpacks being stolen in the first week of school. So, um, you know, I would recommend uh, that uh, renter's insurance is just a really practical uh, decision. It's typically grad guard works again with hundreds of universities. When you sign your lease or your housing agreement, you're told the university's uh, limits of liability uh, and that means that they're not going to pay for damaged property or stolen property. And as a result, they provide an opportunity to enroll in grad guard. Well, why would you choose the grad guards renter's insurance? Let me just explain again. I'm not a, a my goal. Is that, is that, yeah. That's a question too. Should I, why do I, or should I, could it just be part of my, you know, insurance? Yeah. So you, you can use home insurance, but I, if you have, I would highly recommend against it. Home insurance is likely to lead. First of all, you probably have a high deductible. There's a limit typically of 20% for your students living outside the house. But more importantly, you're going to pay a lot more for your premiums as soon as you have a claim. And those premiums for your home insurance also can frequently extend your uh, auto, auto insurance. We designed the plan for renter's insurance so that the student is the insured. The student, there will never, if they file, we've had one customer that filed three claims. We will never report them to a claims database. It will never follow them around. And why is that? Because the universities we work with don't want this to follow students, mm -hmm. right? The second thing is most of the renter's insurance you'll see online uh, requires you to maintain your address, All right? So how many students move dorms between the semesters or even during the semesters? Um, we take the address on file with the university because again, we wanna pay claims. We want that student to be able to pay for the damages they cause or get their backpack replaced or their bike replaced. The third thing is we have a hundred dollar deductible um, and it's worldwide property coverage. So you could be on study break, study abroad. You could be on a spring break and you still have coverage. Typically the price is around $12 a month for $5,000 of property coverage and $50,000 of liability coverage. My recommendation today is to get $100,000 of liability coverage uh, and typically $5,000 of property coverage. That's typically what we're seeing more people buy. And that's around $14. So literally the extra $50,000 of liability coverage is $2 more a month. So again, when you're living on campus, uh, schools don't all require this, 
but it's a really smart decision. And we have schools now that have 60% of their students buying grad guards policies. And we are paying claims all the time. And they're small claims from backpacks and bikes being stolen to large claims. So so what about um, how does the rent insurance apply if the student is living off campus? It works perfectly. It works the same way. Uh, they do have to update their address and they move off campus, just to, uh, to be clear about that. So we have the liability coverage. They still have property coverage no matter what. Um, there is also a loss of use benefit so that if they're water, such severe water damage or there's a fire and you can't live there, we'll pay 20% of the off-campus housing costs to live in a, a hotel for a week uh, if necessary. So if you have a $5,000 property coverage, we'll pay $1,000 to hotels or Airbnb to, to help you through that process. And by the way, we're this is working. Um, now, anybody can buy gra uh, Greg Guard's renter's insurance. The schools that work with us get a preferred price automatically. Uh, but just go to gradguard.com. Uh, I feel really, um, uh, you know, an important piece to highlight. I feel good about this product. There is no gotchas. Let me tell you the, the gotcha thing that I can't stand about renter's insurance. The big one is electronics coverage. So typically you buy a $5,000 renter's insurance policy. You think you have $5,000 property coverage. And then you read the fine details and you say, oh, but there's only $1,500 for electronics. Most people's backpacks have more than, most students have more than $1,500 of electronics. We provide the same electronics coverage as to whatever your property limit. So if you have $10,000 of property limits, we don't limit electronics coverage because that's what students need. Um, that's a classic gotcha. That's what gives the insurance industry uh, a bad reputation. We, because we work with schools, we can't ever afford to embarrass a school or not deliver on our promise. So, so uh, actually, a parent sent me this question about renters insurance. Um, she was asking if her student lives off campus and she and they live in a um, an apartment where the landlord does not require renters insurance, but she wants to get renters insurance for her student, but the other people in the house aren't getting renters insurance like how does that work because what happens if something you know so hap happens where they need to use the renters insurance and there's only one person that has it well it's um that that policy will cover everybody in there really? but uh you know and they that the the student with the policy won't i mean they'll have to file a claim and it'll benefit everybody there I don't recommend that um, because more than likely the other people also have property. And if the if you have five thousand dollars of property coverage and a hundred thousand dollars of liability, maybe the the fire and the damage is protected and paid for, but the first five thousand dollars is going to go to her, and uh, it's not going to be paid for uh, for the rest of the folks. Yeah, my recommendation for uh, somebody just asked, um, I would recommend five thousand dollars of property coverage for most most students. Uh, and hundred thousand dollars of liability coverage if you're living on campus. If you're living off campus, off campus apartment owners typically recommend something similar. Um, the other key piece is, about our policy is we have a hundred dollar deductible. That's preset. You can save yourself some money by having a five hundred dollar deductible, and you will see renters insurance policies promoted on the internet that basically are nine dollars a month, right? But they have five hundred. They have larger deductibles. They've got more restrictions on them. And I'll just tell you, I mean, I wouldn't go shop this for $2 a month. Uh, this is a program that really works. So. so somebody asked, maybe you can talk about it a little bit more again. Um, why does a student need liability coverage? So you're responsible for the damage you might cause. So if you throw a Frisbee down, and by the way, you can go to a website called collegetales.com. And we've assembled and curated all of these student newspaper articles from all the stupid things that occur in dorms. Uh, the flying uh, drones through the hallways of a dorm, the golf. Uh, I'll actually tell you when this is in my son's dorm last uh, Christmas break, um, somebody must have, and it was a big high rise, like 30 floors. Somebody left a um, window open uh, winter and um, whoever was responsible, I guess, for checking the dorm rooms didn't check or anyhow, this window was left open and a pipe froze, burst like from the 10th floor down, every every room in that line got soaked. Yep. And so <laughs> if you go to our Grad Guard YouTube page, you'll see real testimonials from students about examples exactly like that. Uh, and so um, I, uh, I, I mean, the, the reality is, uh, I think in a lot of cases, renter's insurance is, is easier for parents to understand. It's easier to predict. 
you know, both my kids, their bikes got stolen. I mean, it's just easier to predict that um, that either their bikes are going to get stolen, a backpack might be stolen, or they might be a victim to some uh, water event or a fire. I mean, like I said, there's three million students live in, in residence halls. There were 1,840 reported fires in uh, dormitories last year. And that's the Clery Act. That's just the Clery Act data. That's just the data we we're, we collect from universities. So, um, so somebody's asking about rent insurance if it's twelve months policy. Um, you know what happens when they move home? Yeah, so we actually have a pause policy. So you can put you can uh, log into gragart.com and put your policy in pause. Uh, you can restart it three months later. Uh, you can cancel it. It's it's not a. You can buy it for twelve months if you want. You can buy it for a month to month basis. Uh, it's about half and half. Um, about half of our customers uh, buy it on a monthly basis and half buy it on an annual basis. So um, the there was a question about uh, water coverage. Uh, any damage is, we don't cover floods, but floods that are caused due to a uh, fire suppression system, that's a flood. It's just not a natural flood. So there are certain natural disasters that are not covered, but that's typical for, for insurance uh generally speaking. That's that's not what we're typically talking about. We're not talking about natural disasters. We're talking about uh, human-made- Human-made disasters. <laughs> yeah. uh, if anybody watched Barstool Sports, you'll just be frightened at what can happen in, uh, within a, a dormitory. <laughs> so. so, I mean, we're also talking about other types of insurance just so that it, to educate parents, even though Gradcard doesn't offer it, but I know we've touched in past about um, health insurance that families should yep. be aware of. Health and life insurance, I like to just touch on, and nobody really wants to talk about these things, but health insurance uh, in many schools is a requirement and there's a waiver process. The most important thing I, uh, that I think you should be aware of is do not be billed twice, all right? So UC Berkeley, where my second son went, uh, they require you to prove that you have coverage that meets their expectations. So they will, uh, my my son's school too, they will add it to the bill until you prove to them that that, that they have um, other insurance. And yeah. you have to do that by a certain date. Yeah, and you get charged. And I will tell you, I think that is wrong. I uh, My university officials that I'm friends with, they don't like me saying this. <laughs> uh, I think after Obamacare, now students can buy coverage generally at most places. If your parent and your parents may also have coverage, uh, and so if you're on your parents' policy, as us as families, really important to uh, not uh, be double billed. And so this is just an easy way to make certain you're you're saving yourself that three or four thousand dollars. By the way, most uh, of these they're called student uh, accident sickness plans. Uh, they're typically around thirty five to forty five hundred dollars, so they're not inexpensive. Right. Um, and so you're going to see it on your bill. And the reason they bill you is that you can use federal financial aid dollars for that. And uh, that's why it's called a waiver program or an opt-out program. And so uh, it's very, um, you know, it's very uh, uh, important to just look at your bill carefully. That's one of those uh, things you can definitely opt out of uh, in most cases. Um, but now, uh, the fair thing to also look at is, is to understand your health insurance. And if your student's going out of state, you know, if your health insurance covers your student in whatever state they're going to at the level that you need or want them to have. So, you know, right. they might, but just but just double check that as well. That's right. Now, if your student uh, it's just um, so health insurance is really important to have I mean, because of all the health conditions I mentioned, uh, I would say if your son or daughter is traveling, if they're more than three hours away, this sounds silly. But uh, if you're going to count the number of trips you might make, you and your family uh, you and your uh, your uh, partner or and your student, it may end up being as many as six or eight trips. So the other thing to consider is whether or not, and if you're flying across the country, that could be all of a sudden ten thousand dollars or eight thousand dollars of flight expenses. Uh, if you're not flying Southwest, those flights are at risk and being uh, if you anytime you cancel them. So I don't recommend buying travel insurance per ticket. I do uh, what I've done in my own family is I buy a travel insurance policy from Allianz. I don't get paid for saying this. Uh, it's I basically. I estimate how much I'm going to spend on travel this year. And uh, and then I buy an annual policy to cover that amount. Wow. I didn't know you could do that. that I, I just and, learned something. <laughs> and Allianz, Allianz does a great job of that. So I've got a big family. I'm always traveling with maybe seven people, but I have kids away at school. 
So I can estimate I'm going to spend ten thousand dollars a year on travel. I'm going to buy a ten thousand dollar policy, and it's it's reasonably, uh, but account it, it includes trip cancellation. It includes some really good things. So again, evaluate your family's risk. How much you're going to be spending on travel, and this this can be another smart way to protect yourself because of something might that might go up. So. Um, and definitely, Stuart, you just asked a question about students that are overseas. You definitely need uh, travel insurance for those students, uh, in my recommendation, uh, because travel insurance overseas is not so much about health care. It is about being able to uh, have medical evacuation coverage, which is very uh, important and often necessary. Um, it's very difficult to get a, a student back that may be injured uh, or struggling. Uh, with and very expensive coverage. if you don't have very, any very coverage. Expensive. Yeah. yeah. So the, the last topic that nobody really wants to talk about is life insurance. Um, and I would say life insurance is an important thing to consider, not only for ourselves as parents. Uh, term life is generally still affordable, even in our 50s. Um, and um, if you are a co-borrower on a student loan, it's very important, especially a co-borrower on a private student loan. Uh, it's very important that you have coverage. Uh, so that those loans can be repaid. Uh, and uh, again, it may be a $100,000, $250,000 policy, but during that college experience, uh, the worst case scenario is a parent that might die who's a co-borrower of a private loan. That loan can be called on that student because the student will need to either find a new co-borrower or repay that loan immediately in most cases. Nobody really talks about this because you don't hear it happening that often. But it's just a smart thing to consider if you are a co-borrower. It's relatively affordable uh, and it's an important feature. Uh, if you're taking out plus loans, in the case of a parent's death, those loans are forgiven. And so uh, plus loans are typically more expensive than private loans, but they do have that benefit of being forgiven in the case of death. Again, nobody wants to talk about this uh, in terms of our death. Now, the well, second- I'll, I'll, Sorry, I'll add one other unfortunate story to that is- um, um, you're talking about students or parents who might um, be co-signing. I actually believe that all parents, whether even if you can afford to pay for it in full, um, it, because if you're the primary income earner and something happens to you, uh, I've had personal incidences where um, um, something uh, you know, sudden happened and you know now it's at risk whether that student can finish college because um, you know the parent who is earning is no longer around. That's right. That's right. It's um, the, the last thing is if you can afford it, it's not a bad idea to consider buying a uh, life insurance policy in your students. And the reason for that is most many chronic illnesses and uh, and other health conditions may emerge in their 20s. And so the earlier you buy uh, life insurance, you're really buying the insurability. Uh, of that uh, student. And so normally what you can do is buy a $100,000 policy that will give you, which is very inexpensive, can be less than $100 sometimes. A million dollar policy is can be very affordable for a young person that's healthy. But really what you want to do is you're preserving the insurability of that student. And what you're thinking about is 10 years from now when they're married and having kids, uh, and maybe they've had cancer, or they've had something that makes them uninsurable. Buying a term life policy that has the ability to increase coverage over time has real value. Um, again, and it can be so inexpensive now when it's they're young. Very, very inexpensive. And I, and I don't sell it. I'm just <laughs> telling you, it's, but I bought it for my own kids. I think it's a smart thing to do. And in the case of their tragic death, my nephew died uh, while he was in, uh, in school. It helps repay the student loans uh, if they happen to be private. Uh, and you're a co borrower, for instance. Uh, a co-borrowers are still responsible for the loan, even in the case of the death of the student in most cases. I know these are you know not topics that we like to talk about, but they're important. Yep. Yeah. You yeah. know, and this all goes back to, especially because, you know, the whole cost of going to college these days is, is really so expensive that um, you need to consider all these other safeties to make sure you're insuring, you know, the investment. Yeah, I, I really, we're mission driven. I mean, uh, we're here for you. If you have questions, you can call us. You can, uh, we speak to uh, hundreds of students every, and families every day. This is an unusual thing. We're, we have 15 interns uh, that work with us. We've trained really well. We have professional licensed insurance uh, people that can help you with specific questions. We're not here to sell, we're here to serve. And so uh, we're the only company that does what we do. We're happy to be helpful. Um, 
And, you know, feel free to visit gradguard.com. Uh, what I would say is that you're already smarter than uh, most of the families heading off to college because you were talking to Debbie. Debbie's got the best content. <laughs> no, she's got the best content. You're going to make smart friends. Well, and, and because they're here tonight. <laughs> you're taking the time. There's not, it's typically the second largest investment families make. And we're just not aware of the risks to the investment we're making and, and the risks to our, our children. At, at the end of the day, uh, success for us is helping students complete uh, their degrees, get on their way and overcome any of these disruptions that might might occur. Uh, you can't predict when it might happen. You can't predict which student might happen to. Uh, but we do know uh, that the risk is real. So. so there's just a logistics question. Somebody's asking, how do you add renter's insurance to the tuition protection offered on the school's portal? So uh, it sounds yeah. like that's yeah. probably separate. It. Yeah, it's separate. Uh, yeah. You know, it's through... Uh, you go to gradguard.com after you buy the policy or you can go to gradguard, but you can link the policies. It's very easy to do on gradguard. Um, so it's, and by the way, I've done it for all my kids. I've got both policies. It's smart. Um, and, uh, and again, if you have problems, just message me and say, Hey, I was on your webinar. Uh, I'm easy to reach. Uh, and I, I we want to make sure you're satisfied. I think the other thing is as you go to orientation, as you go to schools, you know, you can do be a service to other families. You can help families be aware. Hey, did you know what the refund policy of the school is? You know, I didn't either. Uh, and just helping them be aware that these are smart decisions. I think it pay it forward is wherever you can. Uh, not everybody has the time to be on a webinar tonight and not everybody's uh, aware of it. And the media is not writing about anything other than campaigns and politics and, right. and the crisis around the world. Um, and so you're not going to read a bunch of articles about grad guard. They just, they don't exist anymore, um, in the media. And so these types of things really are about word of mouth at this point. So, so somebody's asking, um, if their school is offering renters insurance through grad guard, um, does that mean that they probably also offer ins uh, tuition insurance? I wish they did. They don't all, uh, <laughs> we, we have about 170 schools that do both. Um, UC Berkeley, Creighton, Brandeis, every school should do both. But uh, typically the Bursar and the student housing people, they don't, we have a contract with the university, but then each department gets to decide whether or not they want to implement the program. So the housing director gets to make the decision and the uh, Bursar gets to make the decision. And that's, you know, there's nothing like university because those people can make their decisions and they can't be told what to do <laughs> by almost anybody. So. Um, and then an, another quick clarification, somebody was asking, does the renter's insurance, and I think you might have explained this, but um, cover like MacBook cameras and, and if they're broken and or stolen? Yeah, so uh, we don't cover accidents. Um, so uh, so, so ac this is not um, uh, Apple Care, um, specifically for uh, iPhone uh, or for a computer. So if the computer just falls, it's not covered. Uh, it's, uh, so that, that's, it's an important distinction. Uh, there are student property programs that do act, act very much like, um, Apple care. And so those can be a perfect complement. They typically do not include liability coverage, uh, and they, they may have the same other restrictions. So, um, there was a question about musical instruments. Yeah. I should know the answer to that because my own kids play instruments, um, I will have to get back to you on that. I don't remember. Natalie's one of my colleagues is on here. She might remember. I um, I don't know for certain. I don't remember if we've excluded them. I don't think we do, but I think there might be prop there might be limits um, on uh, you know it's not a twenty five thousand dollar violin that we're covering. I, I I I'm pretty sure we don't cover those higher ends ones. So. Um, yeah, Lisa asks, can we ex review examples of what renter's insurance covers? Uh, so uh, damage, theft are the two number one reasons. Uh, so damage it's you that is caused uh, by you uh, that you're liable for. So hitting the sprinklers, causing a fire uh, as two examples. If somebody also gets injured on your property, there's liability coverage because you're responsible for that person that might have slipped on the ice from the keg that was uh, down the hall, <laughs> right? Uh, so... Uh, liability coverage is, is uh, typically in that regard. Say you run uh, into somebody uh, riding a bike, not a motorized bike, but a bike. You run into somebody, they get injured. There's coverage for that as well. Um, typically on the property side, 
Uh, it is theft, number one reasons uh, that we that we cover. We do not cover um, uh, accidents. We do cover water damage. It doesn't really matter where the damage comes from, but water is the most common. So, and so yes, John, yeah, go ahead. There was a question. It's like um, uh, we do. Uh, it provides our, our renters insurance covers on campus housing, but it all, also works for off campus housing as well. So, um, any advice to parents about even so car insurance? So car insurance, leave your car at home. Uh, it's my number one recommendation, <laughs> uh, especially for freshmen. I don't think it's a smart decision at all. Uh, the first term, let them find friends with cars. Uh, let that friend not be your student or daughter I, I or son or daughter. That's maybe my recommendation. I think, and uh, the other thing is, it's really important to check in with your auto insurance company and say, my student's away at school. You'll, you'll lower the miles that they're driving. They're probably two or 3,000 miles versus 12, and you'll lower your insurance rates. So that's a really easy way to save some money that will then help you afford renter's insurance or tuition. <laughs> and it's just, that's a natural. Um, it's hard to tell your kids not to have a, a car in school. I've done it with both mine. I really think it's the right thing, at least for your freshman year or first semester. So, Great. Any other questions? I mean, I think we covered a lot. We covered kind of the field of insurance, whether or not RedGuard offers it. And um, John, you always give good advice. Um, again, I didn't, this isn't necessarily going to relate to my student, but I learned that I could buy a um, travel insurance for the whole year. <laughs> it's, if you travel a lot, you just calculate what you spend. Uh, Allianz is a great travel annual. It's called an annual travel pass. And uh, if you leave the country, it's definitely worth it. Uh, even domestically, I, I live in Phoenix, so it's trickier. I mean, Southwest, you don't need, they, they always give you refunds. So. so John, somebody's asking, and we forgot to mention this. Yeah. They said our school Scripps College also covers something called student life assistant, 24 hour emergency hotline. Do you yes. want to explain what that is? Um, so, uh, so, um, I don't know what's well the student life assistance at Scripps College. I, I'm not exactly certain. Um, uh, you know, if that's the grad guard program, it is true. It is it's covered. So I'm sorry that I didn't highlight it. Uh, so the worst case scenario, your son or daughter is at Scripps and they need to, uh, you know, be hospitalized for an emotional health or physical illness or accident. Uh, you now need to leave school. And so who do you call to help you move your stuff out of the dorm? Student life assistance will not pay for it, but will coordinate all the care necessary to have, for instance, your car returned if the car is on campus or to pack up your dormitory and have it shipped back. So that's what student life assistance is. It's a concierge service that we basically are pretty good at the logistics side of helping that family. And frequently when you have a student in need or a crisis due to being in an accident, an injury, or any number of these other health issues, you've got two problems. You've got a, an acute need of a student, but you also then have their life that you need to pack up. And then the third is a financial loss. And so when we built the tuition insurance program, we basically wanted to have something that would also help ease the pain of dealing with the other stuff in that life. Uh, it doesn't pay for moving the car. It just puts you in touch with direct resources that are good at, at doing these things. Uh, and we do this with Allianz and Allianz is world-class at this, so. Okay. Anything about, there, was, there was a question about U Loop. U Loop is a partner of ours. We do have other affiliates. Um, and so you might find Grad Guard on uh, College Confidential or U Loop or College Parents of America or any other sites. Uh, you know, we're uh, happy to basically work with these other uh, sites, not so much as resellers, just to be clear. But we've, because there's virtually no money in selling a policy that's $120. It really takes a lot of scale to be able to do what we do. But the idea is that we work with partners to basically bring a visibility to this, just like Debbie. And uh, we don't wanna scare anybody off uh, about going to college. College is worth it, but it's particularly worth it when you graduate. And we need to make certain we uh, help reduce the financial losses that students might otherwise encounter. Great, okay. Well, John, Always a pleasure. Always um, so helpful to just cover the whole spectrum of insurance. Um, and uh, I hope and I know that people learn tonight. And just to summarize, um, uh, you know, know what your college's refund policy is. 
you know, for I hopefully everything we talked about tonight, and I'm not really trying to do a sales job, I'm, I'm just trying to summarize, you know, makes it, you realize that it's worth having tuition insurance. And if that's something you want, again, just make sure that you um, sign up for it before classes start, because after classes start, it's, um, you, you just won't be able to do it. Right. Exactly right. Okay. Good. Thanks, everybody. Uh, feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. Uh, Natalie, my colleagues on the line here, and, and uh, thanks, everybody. Good luck to you uh, and your students. Great. Thank you, John, as always. Take care, everybody. Take care. Bye.